Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Amir and I'm a third year medical student at the Icon University. And in this video, I will be talking about the five things I think is a necessity that is um, five things that I think is essential for um, med school and the five things that you don't necessarily need when you're starting off med school. This video is primarily focused and dedicated to those who are getting into med school, those who got into med school recently and for basically the first year medical students. So let's begin with the video. I think the very first thing everyone should have and probably do have already is a decent laptop. So this is my laptop, it's a Dell. It gets the work done, it has everything, 512 GB SSD, 8 GB RAM, 11th gen Core i5, two USB port, an HDMI port, um, it has everything. And along with the laptop, I have a microfiber cloth to keep it clean. I have a laptop sleeve to keep it protected. Um, I have a wireless earphone and a wired earphone in case a wireless one dies. That's all my laptop and accessory. And I think um, either a laptop works or a tablet. So the reason why I think um, having a laptop or a tablet is essential for you is because um, there's two factors, I think. So the very first one is I think um, the ability to keep PDFs on it. You can keep, instead of keeping all the books in your backpack, uh, you can dump all hundreds and hundreds of books into your laptop. Um, and that becomes very, very convenient. Having PDFs is very nice. You can control F um, and search for a specific word. If you're on a tablet, you can annotate um, the, the PDF document with your Apple Pencil and that becomes super, super nice. And then the second reason why I think is uh, why I think it's super, super nice having a laptop is because it's multi-use multi, multi -use purpose. Um, and what I mean by that is um, having a laptop or having a tablet means you can watch your TV on it, you can edit videos on it, you can edit your photos on it, you can search the web, watch your emails, you can do everything on it. You can use it to type up documents, your essays, your, your make PowerPoints for your classes. You can do a bunch of stuff on it. And the good thing about like a laptop with a decent battery life, I would say you need a decent battery life at least 10 hours, is um, you can take it to your lecture halls, you can type on it, you can write, write notes on it on your tablet. And that makes, um, ma makes it super, super nice. So what I do, for example, I make my notes on Notion on my laptop, and then I have it accessible on my phone because it's all synced. Second thing I think everyone should have is this. This is uh, uh, an external SSD hard drive. Um, this is my one TB hard drive. You don't need one TB, I would say 500 GB at a minimum is super nice. So the benefit of having an SSD is you can, so there's like, again, there's two benefits of having an SSD. Number one is not only you, but your whole family can use it. So you can dump all your pictures on it, you can dump videos on it, you can dump movies on it, you can dump books on it, you can dump anything on it. And since it's 1TB, and since an SSD is quite, um, it's durable, um, you don't lose all of that. So in this SSD, I have all my lecture videos, I have videos, I have all my family pictures dating back from like 2008 onto this. So it is an essential. and. In relation to med school, the reason why having an SSD is super important is because when you join med school, you'll realize that there is um, there is a need to watch a bunch of lecture videos. Once you join med school, your seniors, your batchmates are, are going to be sharing a, a drive link with all of it, like all the pirated videos on that link. So the benefit of having a hard drive for me is when there is no light. When there's no Wi-Fi, when Wi-Fi isn't working, I have access to all those videos on the hard drive. So it becomes very convenient for me to um, when I need to study. Like there's at least 100 GB worth of medical videos on this hard drive. So it's super, super important. And yeah, you guys should have one. The third thing I think is, a, is an essential thing in, um, for you guys is, is this thing. It's my power bank. Um, it's 10,400 milliamp hours. It charges my phone two to three times. Um, I keep it with me in my car, in my bag, in my pocket. And the good thing about having it is you always need to have um, power for your phone. Without your phone, your life is nothing these days. So this is super important. Having a, a good, decent, at least 5,000 milliamp hour battery is super essential. Fourthly, 
the fourth essential thing I think, the fourth thing you, you might need in med school is a decent water bottle. So this is my sturdy one and a half liter water bottle. Um, it keeps my water super cold. It keeps my tea very hot when I need it to be hot. And it's super important because there's, there's a lot of reason. I mean, save on plastic. You shouldn't be buying 30, 30 rupee plastic bottles all the time. And in my case, in my university, they do no longer sell um, plastic water bottles. So, um, because they banned it, they want to be environmentally friendly and all of that. So I, it is, it's essential for me at least at AKU. I think another good reason of having a big water bottle is because you get to stay hydrated. And when you're, when you're like putting in all those hours in the library, um, staying hydrated keeps you up, it keeps you active, it keeps you um, sharp and all of that. There's all the benefits of drinking water, obviously. And then the fifth thing I think is super important is, is, is a decent table setup. So, okay, I'll show you my table setup later. I used to study everywhere across my house. So I used to study on my bed right in front of you, in front of me. Um, I used to study on the floor at times. I used to study on the dining room table. And the problem with all of that is when people would eat on the dining table, I would have to move all my stuff. When I would sleep on the bed, I would have to move all the stuff. Having a table with a decent chair makes it efficient for you. You can keep all your stuff on, all your books, your notebook, your laptop, your charger. And by doing, by having all of that at one place, you can essentially um, be very, very productive. And um, that's a goal uh, for every med school student. So, like I said, this is my study table setup. So this is two tables attached. Um, it gives me an L shape uh, design. And the benefit of having all of this combined is um, it gives you like a whole surface area. I have a table in front, I have a table on my side and it makes it very, very efficient. So I have my small handy dandy um, power set up over here with all my chargers and stuff. Um, and yeah, that's about it. And then I have my chair. So it's super nice. It goes up and down, it tilts, it does all of that. So having a good table and chair for your butt sake and for your study sake is super, super nice. All right. So let's now talk about the five things I don't necessarily think is essential for you when you're starting off med school. And I think the very first thing is a stethoscope. So this is my brother, mine. I we share a stethoscope because we don't really need it at the moment, but this is a stethoscope. Um, um, this isn't super important for you in first year. You probably will not be using it anywhere. Um, maybe you might need it for a day when you are um, maybe measuring someone's blood pressure. But other than that, it's a non-essential thing. So you don't have to pressure your parents or you don't have to pressure anyone into buying an expensive Litman stethoscope back when you're in first year. Second thing I think is not super important for you when you're starting off med school is those bone structure, those um, the skull set, the bone set, the muscle set, all of that. Um, you don't need it. I, I didn't buy one. So I have this picture in front of me of the skull. This gets my whole skull thing ready. Um, there is a 3D software you can, um, you can use. You can download a bunch of 3D softwares. Um, on the App Store, on the Google Play Store, and you can use that as a reference. And then on top of that, most universities have an anatomy museum um, where you can use a skeleton, you can look at cadavers, you can look at um, a bunch of uh, muscles and bone structures. The third thing, the third thing I think um, you don't really need are those big, big books. So I have a few over here. This is Grey's Anatomy's. I hope you can see it. This is Kaplan, this is Lange, uh, Microbiology. And I have a bunch of other books in my brother's room. So big books, small books, you don't have to buy all of them right now. Um, the very first few modules of med school is where you experiment with different books. You get accustomed to the studying methods and the studying style of med school. Um, you get comfortable with the books, with um, with the books and different resources, you familiarize yourself to the different books and resources. So there is really no point purchasing in, in you know, in panic all of these books because some senior recommended it. Um, 
The number one thing is perhaps borrowing it from the library. All libraries have all these books. Um, you can borrow it from your friend, you can borrow it from a senior, or you can ask someone around for a book uh, that you might want to purchase later on. Um, have a go through it and then decide. I know um, my brother, he purchased a lot of books. I know I purchased some books um, which I've never used ever since purchasing because I later realized how bad they were because there were many other books that were better than that. The reason why you also don't need books, big books and purchasing all these books is because PDFs are available. So I talked about it um, in the very first part of the video about laptops and all. Having PDFs is a lifesaver. So you can always experiment with books um, using PDFs and that's another reason as to why you might not want to buy all the books in the very beginning. The fourth thing I think isn't super important for you guys in um, first year med school is the urge to jump into each and everything, to be a perfectionist or to be involved in everything isn't super important for you. Um, like I said before, um, the first six months of med school, I would say is where you adjust yourself, you make new friends, you, um, you, you look around campus, you meet new professors and faculty members, you assimilate yourself to the surrounding and the university environment. So um, you don't necessarily have to jump into research. You don't have to, you know, impulsively um, think that you must do research from day one. You don't, you must not think that um, you have to step and, you know, do all that U.S. assembly, plan, prep, abyssid. Um, that's not essential for you right now. And then the last thing I think that isn't super essential for you guys right now is um, the need of caffeine. Um, super silly, but like I see people going on full caffeine regimens and people going on like full chai coffee mixtures and black coffees, shots and all of that. If you sleep well, if you drink plenty of water, if you have a healthy lifestyle, caffeine isn't super important for you. The only time I take caffeine, to be very honest, I don't drink chai every morning. I don't drink coffee in the morning. I occasionally do. Uh, but not for studying purposes. So the only time I take coffee is when I am cold in the library or when I am cold in the morning or like that's about it. Um, I don't think during my prof exams I took caffeine regularly. I did it every now and then but to keep myself awake I didn't. Maybe it's just me but um, people manage without caffeine and Overdosing on caffeine isn't too good. Um, people um, become dependent on caffeine and that becomes very bad for you. Um, so controlling your caffeine intake or um, limiting your caffeine intake to like a cup a day or two cups a day is essential for, um, for you guys at the moment. So let's end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like and share this video if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the channel, help us reach 30,000 subscribers, um, follow us on Instagram, um, follow us all on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, um, it's all linked down below. So thank you so much for watching and yeah.